you receive him and let him come into your life and you'll find what it means to be joyful. You know, when the BGs were in Canada, it was stated that their Saturday Night Fever had sold over 25 million albums. I think that's a record breaker for... I'm not sure that Elvis Presley ever sold that many. But anyway, it was quoted in the paper that Barry Gibb, that at the very time that he was smiling and looking into the camera and it looked like he was having such a wonderful time, he made the statement that he felt inside like warmed over death. And you know, I meet a lot of these stars as we travel about, and our whole team does. All over the world, we've met them, and we, some of them we know. And we found how miserable you can be and be at the top of the heap. And everybody looking at you saying, I'd like to be like that. But so miserable inside. Or a person that seeks political power and he gets to the top and he becomes maybe the president of the United States. And he thought to himself when he was a little boy, oh, if I could only be president of the United States, I'd be the happiest man in the world. And he gets in that White House and he becomes so lonely. And the burden is so great, you can almost see a president age on television. Without Christ to fill that empty void in your life, nothing else satisfies. Sex doesn't do it, drugs doesn't do it, power, popularity, all of that is nothing. Christ is everything. And then when you have Christ, you're ready to live here and now, life with a capital L when you really know Christ as your Savior. Yes, Zacchaeus received Christ joyfully. I was reading in Ann Landa's column some time ago, and a little girl wrote in to say this, and I want to pass it on to the young people here. She said this, Can I say something to that kid who thought pot was the greatest, one that had written in earlier to Ann? She said, I'm 18 and I've been on a terrific high for the last three years. But it's not pot that does it for me. It's Jesus. I don't need drugs or booze. My kicks come from loving him and knowing he loves me. And it's the greatest trip there is. Give your life to Christ. And have the greatest joy you've ever known. And notice another thing. Zacchaeus openly confessed Christ publicly. He stood in front of all of his friends in the whole town. And he said, I've been wrong. I've been a sinner. I'm ready to restore everything I ever did if necessary. Whatever it takes. From now on, I'm following Jesus Christ. He is my Lord and he is my Savior. He came to seek and to save me in this town of Jericho. He came to Halifax in the form of this crusade to seek and to save you. And he called you by name. And he says, make haste, come, while there's time. Because you see, the scripture says, whosoever denieth the Son, the same hath not the Father. He that confesseth the Son openly hath the Father also. Also, the scripture says, whosoever shall confess that Jesus is the Son of God, dwelleth in him, and he in God. And Jesus said, if you deny me before men, if you deny me publicly, I'll not confess you before my Father which is in heaven. You see, Jesus Christ hung on the cross publicly in front of hundreds of people, dying, bleeding for you. And he asked you to publicly receive him. And I'm going to ask you to do that in a moment. There are three things you have to do. First, listen to this, so you can never stand at the judgment and say, I never knew First, you must repent of your sin. How do you repent? The word repent means to change your mind. It means to turn. You're going in this direction in your life. You turn around and start in a new direction. Now, you may not be able to turn by yourself. In fact, you can't. You have to say, Lord, help me to turn. Help me to repent. It means that you're willing to let Christ come into your life and help you change your whole pattern of living, your lifestyle, everything, if necessary. And then the second thing, by faith you receive it. Now that word faith may cause you to stumble. It means that you commit, that you surrender your total life to Jesus Christ. You're not trusting any other God. You're not trusting any other religion. You're not trusting anything but Jesus Christ and him alone to save you. 
That's faith, total commitment to Christ. And then thirdly, you're willing to follow him. You're willing to be his disciple. Now the word disciple means learner or discipline. It means discipline learning. You're following him, growing in the grace and knowledge of Christ by studying the Bible, by prayer, by witnessing, by attendance at church. You say, well, Billy, you know, most of those things I'm, I'm already doing. But do you really know Christ? Are you sure of it? If you're not sure, if you're not certain that Christ is in your heart tonight and that your sin is forgiven, he's calling you by name, he sees you, and he says, make haste and come. I'm going to ask you to get up out of your seat right now, hundreds of you from everywhere, as we've seen every night. Get up out of your seat and come and stand in front and say by coming, I want to come to the cross by faith tonight and I want my sins forgiven. I want to know that I have eternal life. I want to know I'm going to heaven. You get up and come right now, quickly, and stand here. If you're with friends or relatives, they'll wait. And after you've come, I'm going to say a word to you and have a prayer with you. And we'll give you some literature to help you in your Christian life. And then you can go and join your friends. But I'm going to ask no one to leave the stadium now. At this holy moment, everyone in an attitude of prayer, as people are already coming, you get up and come right now too. God is calling you by name. Jesus is looking in your direction, and he knows your heart, and he says, come. You get up and come quickly. We're going to wait. 